So what is Leviticus chapter 25 verses 44 to 46 really saying? Why is it so different to Hebrew slavery? Why is it in comparison so much harsher than Hebrew slavery? Does that mean God endorses slave traders when it comes to foreigners? Why does the Bible refer to Hebrews as servants and bond servants, but when it comes to foreigners it refers to them as slaves? Isn't that strange? Okay, let's start by talking about the word slave in the Hebrew language. In the English translation of the Bible, when talking about Hebrew slaves, it uses the word servant or bondservant. But when it's talking about foreign people or Gentiles, it uses the word slave. So what is the difference between the word servant and the word slave in the original Hebrew language? Well, nothing. There is no difference. They are the exact same word. The Hebrew word in both cases is a bed. There is no difference between the Hebrew word for servant and the word used for foreign slaves. It's just a translation issue. Some translators choose to translate the word abed to mean servant or bondman or bondservant in one place, but then use the same word and translate it as slave in another place. There is no justification for this. It's exactly the same word. So there is no way to differentiate between a bondservant and a slave in the original Hebrew language. It's just that one word, abed. That's it. It's basically up to the translators to interpret it the way they wish. But when translated differently for Hebrew and foreign people, it makes it sound like God is treating foreigners harsher than Hebrews. This makes the translation a little misleading. And to make it worse, when people today hear the word slave, they associate that word with modern African slave trade, which of course skeptics love and use it to attack the Bible. But the word abed means something completely different in the Hebrew language. It has nothing to do with the modern meaning of the word slave. It's not even close. On top of that, the meaning of words change over time. If you want to know how it was used in the past, you need to find a dictionary of that day. You can't use today's dictionary to interpret a word that's several hundred or thousands of years old. No one does that. Unless, of course, you have some kind of agenda. Let me give you some examples. Today we use the word bully to describe someone who hurts or intimidates another weaker person. But it used to mean sweetheart. It probably comes from the Dutch word for lover. Also today the word naughty is a word you use for children who misbehave. But in the past, when you called someone naughty, then you're saying that they have nothing. It comes from the word naught. If they have naught, then that means they are poor. So the meaning of words change. You need to know how it was used based on when it was used. If you're reading some literature or article that's old, it would make no sense interpreting old words using today's dictionary. On top of that, to make it worse, you need to know the culture so you know how the word is used. That's the same for the Bible. In fact, the most basic foundation for Hermeneutics 101, which is the science of interpreting the Bible, is to make sure you understand the words properly. That makes translating an old book into a new modern language so hard. Hermeneutics also tells us not to read text out of context, to use the Bible as a whole, amongst other things such as eisegesis and exegesis. But of course the skeptic ignores all that and wants us to use an old Hebrew word, ignore the original meaning, interpret the word using today's dictionary, completely ignore the original text and even the context and apply the African slave trade to it. It doesn't make sense. So my first number one point is that the word slave and servant is the same word for both Hebrews and foreigners and in both cases it doesn't mean slavery in the same way as we understand slavery today. So what does the word abed mean? The root word for abed is abad and abad means labor or to work or to serve or even to worship. So it's not a negative word like the word slave in the modern day sense. So effectively when the Bible is talking about servants or slaves, it's talking about workmen or hired workers working under certain conditions. In fact, according to this website, which explains Hebrew names, some of the names found in the Old Testament have the word abed or abad in them, and most of these guys are heroes. Like Abdil or Abadiah, which basically means the servant of Yahweh. So the word abed or abad are not essentially negative. In fact, in some cases, they're outright positive. I'll show you in a minute. According to this website, this is what abed and abad mean. The verb abad means to work or serve, and the noun abed, which is the actual word used in the Bible for both Hebrew and foreign slaves, denotes someone who works from a slave to a hired expert. The Greek equivalent of this noun is doulos. Now, can you see how this is the opposite of what the skeptic tell us? It seems like it's saying the word abed means a hired expert, which has nothing to do with our understanding of the word slave today. So abed or abad basically mean worker. Although it's not essentially negative, it has even been used positively in many places in the Bible. For example, it was given as a title to Moses in Numbers chapter 12 verse 7. It says, my servant Moses, abed, he is faithful in all my house. This sounds like a positive and honoring title to me. It's also used in many other places for Moses as a title of respect. It was also used to honor Joshua. After these things, Joshua son of Nun, the servant, Abed, 
of the Lord died at the age of 110. So Joshua was a servant of the Lord, Abed. That's a positive thing and it was also used in many other places. It's even used for the nation of Israel when God said, let my people go so that they may worship me in the wilderness. The word worship here is Abad, which is the root word for Abed. In fact, some English Bibles translate this particular word as serve, not worship. You can also see this in Exodus chapter 10, verse 3, where it says, Let my people go that they may serve me, Abad. So some Bible translations use the word serve and others use worship interchangeably. Either way, the word is translated in different ways, in different places, and was not inherently negative. In fact, it's used positively in many places. But of course, the skeptic doesn't like this because they want this word to always mean the harsh modern day word for slavery to promote the idea that the Bible endorses slavery as in the African slave trade. But to do this, they have to butcher the original meaning of the word, and many Christians and other atheists fall for it. So, if you're interested, here are the different ways the word abed or abad are used in the Old Testament. It's used to describe Hebrew servants. This is when an Israelite voluntarily becomes a bond servant or a slave or a worker to another Hebrew master or a foreign master to pay off his debt. It's also used for foreign servants, which is the same thing, but I'll be explaining this in great detail very soon. Then you get the prisoners of war. These are, of course, more than just bond servants. They are prisoners. This is where the Israelites took enemy prisoners, and instead of killing them, they were kept as slave laborers, which is not a new thing. It even happens today. The USA and Great Britain both did this during and after the Second World War to repair damage that was caused by the other side. Obviously, these guys were considered dangerous and are carefully watched. So they are not slaves, they are prisoners, but the Bible uses the same word for this group too. We also know that Israel was a slave in other countries. This either happened because they were captives of war or they found themselves in slavery, like in Egypt, which would have been considered harsh and unfair labor. But it's still the same word. And finally, this word was used as honorable and respectful titles for faithful prophets and believers and the nation of Israel. It's the same word every time. So if this word is used in so many different ways, how can you know how it's meant? Well, that's easy. As always, we have to look at the context. We look at the verse, the chapter, the book, and the whole Bible. And that's what we're going to look at next. I hope you're enjoying this topic on slavery covering both Old and New Testament. This study comes in nine parts, which we are releasing weekly. If you don't want to wait that long or want everything in one video, then please go to our product page and download it from there. The link is in the description. This download comes with everything, a full PowerPoint presentation with all the references and each slide has the full script. You can use it to expand your own study or you can change, add or remove any parts you want to help you deliver the message to your own study group. Although downloading this product is not free, by paying for it, you'll be supporting our ministry to produce more videos like this to help you and encourage you to fulfill the Great Commission.